Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 18th of July 2021. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Which of the given statements with respect to pressure swing adsorption is or are incorrect? It is a process that separates single gases from a gas mixture through a cryogenic air separation process. It takes place at very low temperatures. It is mostly used in the chemical industry and the petrochemical industry. Why have we taken this question? Our country faced severe oxygen shortage during the second wave of COVID-19. In this backdrop, what the government did was to allocate funds so that pressure swing adsorption medical oxygen generation plants could be set up at public health facilities across India. And there is a mention of this particular technology in this article in the Hindu newspaper today. Let us understand what pressure swing adsorption is while answering the question. The statement number 1 here is incorrect because it is a process that separates single gases from gas mixture which is correct but through a non-cryogenic air separation process. Let us understand the difference. Cryogenic air separation process is energy intensive and low temperature process. Coming to PSA. This uses non-cryogenic air separation process which operates at near ambient temperatures that is close to room temperature and not at very low temperatures. This makes statement 2 also incorrect. The third statement is correct as pressure swing adsorption is mostly used in the chemical industry as well as the petrochemical industry. So what are its other applications? It is used in separating oxygen and nitrogen from air, hydrogen recovery and purification, etc. Since this question is asking us for the incorrect statement, option C, 1 and 2 only would be the right answer. Moving on to question number 2. Which of the given statements with respect to Universal Service Obligation Fund is or are correct? The fund comes from universal service levy charged from all the telecom operators on their adjusted gross revenue. The fund is deposited in the Consolidated Fund of India. USOF is funding the Bharat Mala and Sagar Mala projects. What is the context? This particular article in the Hindu newspaper says that according to a preliminary report by the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, the Bharatnet project has failed to take off because of financial irregularities. So what was the aim of Bharatnet project? This project aimed at ensuring rural broadband connectivity using optical fibers. And this project was being funded by the Universal Service Obligation Fund and hence this question. Let us go back to the question. When we come across any scheme or any statutory fund, it is important to understand the basics. Here, Universal Service means providing telecommunication services with access to minimum service of a specified quality to all the users everywhere at an affordable price, right? This USOF is a pool of funds and this pool of funds is generated by a 5% levy of universal service levy that is charged on all the telecom operators on their adjusted gross revenue. This makes statement 1 correct. And this fund is deposited in the Consolidated Fund of India and is dispatched only on the approval of the parliament. So statement 2 is also correct. Coming to statement number 3. This fund was created for bridging the digital divide. So if you know why the Bharat Mala and Sagar Mala projects were launched, you will be easily able to eliminate statement 3 as an incorrect statement. As a task for today, let us know in the comment section what are the objectives of the Sagar Mala as well as the Bharat Mala projects. As we discussed from the article, USOF was funding the Bharat Net project. Therefore, the right answer to this question would be option B, 1 and 2 only. Coming to question number 3. Which of the following dams is or are built or being built in Afghanistan in partnership with India? Number 1. Salma Dam Number 2, Soktuk Dam. Number 3, Shatut Dam. Number 4, Band e Sarde Dam. In this article in the Hindu newspaper today, which is an interview with the Afghanistan president, there is a mention of Salma Dam as well as the Shatut Dam. Let us go back to the question and answer it. All these four dams are the dams in Afghanistan. 
The Salma Dam, which is officially named the Afghan India Friendship Dam, is a hydroelectric and irrigation dam project. It is located on River Hari in Herat province in western Afghanistan. And this Salma Dam was inaugurated in the year 2016. This rules out option C because this is the only option without one. Shatut Dam is the second major dam being built by India in Afghanistan. This dam will be constructed in the Kabul River Basin. Therefore, the right answer to this question is option B, 1 and 3 only. Moving on to question number 4. Consider the following statements. The course of Mercury, Venus and Earth are about one third of their mass. Both Mercury and Venus do not have moons or rings. Mercury is the hottest planet in the solar system due to its proximity to the sun. Let us first have a look at the context. This article in the Hindu newspaper talks about Mercury's big iron core. While the earlier hypothesis was that Mercury had a big core because of the collision with other celestial bodies during solar system's formation, a new study states that it is influenced by the planet's distance from the sun's magnetic field. Coming back to the question. Statement number one is wrong because Mercury has a dense iron core. Mercury is 85% core by volume and largely made up of iron. However, a part of this statement is correct because the cores of Earth and Venus are about one third of their mass. Mars has a small core that is only about one quarter of its total mass. With elimination, we are left with option A and option C. Statement number two is correct because both Mercury and Venus could not get rings because of their proximity to the Sun. The powerful solar winds that blast out from the Sun melt and destroy any icy rings around these planets. Also, both these planets do not have a moon. Venus and not Mercury is the hottest planet in our solar system, making option 3 also incorrect. Therefore, the right answer would be option A2 only. It is important to take note of such factual information and revise them because these are the kind of questions which you cannot afford to lose marks in in your prelims exam. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2019. Which one of the following is not the most likely measure the government or RBI takes to stop the slide of Indian rupee? Option B. Encouraging Indian borrowers to issue rupee-dominated masala bonds. Option C easing conditions relating to external commercial borrowings. Option D, following an expansionary monetary policy. The correct answer to this question is option D. Let us have a look why. Curbing imports of non-essential goods will lessen the demand for dollars. And promoting exports will help in increasing the flow of dollars into the country. And this together will help in controlling rupee depreciation. Now coming to masala bonds. Masala bonds are denominated in Indian rupees. So this will help by reducing the demand for dollars for loan repayment. With the increase in external commercial borrowings, the inflow of dollars and other currencies will also increase. Therefore, this will help stop slide in Indian rupee. However, when an expansionary monetary policy is followed, it will lead to money supply in the economy. That is, rupee currency supply will increase without corresponding increase in the supply of dollars. And as a result, dollar will strengthen and Indian rupee will weaken further. So D is the right answer to this question. Now let us take up the fact of the day. That is RBI's data localization policy. What is the context? The Reserve Bank of India has barred MasterCard, American Express and Diners Club from enrolling new customers as they have not been storing their data in India. That is, they have not complied with RBI's requirements of data localization. Let us understand this issue in depth. In April 2018, the Reserve Bank of India issued a circular called the Storage of Payment System Data Circular. And according to this circular, it said that all the system providers should ensure that within six months, the entire data, that is transaction details and all other information that are collected by them relating to payment systems must be stored in a system that is only in India. They were also supposed to report compliance to RBI. 
In addition, RBI also told that the data should be stored only in India and no copy or mirroring should be stored in any other country. So why did RBI think that there was a need for data localization? The RBI insists that storing end-to-end -end transactions only in India to carry out effective law enforcement requirements. Why? Because for India, accessing such data for law enforcement has been a major challenge. And this data localization will help RBI to easily access the data. RBI says that customer privacy and national security are genuine concerns that need to be taken seriously. So what is the issue here? The credit and card firms that have global operations are trying to resist this move of RBI. They say that such data localization will lead to increased costs, security risks and lack of clarity and timeline. They are worried that if they comply with the RBI rules according to this circular, other countries may also ask them to comply with similar requests. So now RBI has barred MasterCard from enrolling new customers. What effect will this recent move have? MasterCard owns about one-third of market share in India. And RBI's ban will significantly benefit its competitors. Number one, the Indian banks that are now enrolled in MasterCard network might end up making alternative arrangements. That is, they may find other card companies to have their arrangements with. Number two, this data localization policy may end up favoring domestic card issuers like Rupee. Number three, Visa, which is also a foreign company that is involved in card payments in India, may come under regulatory pressure. And this entire card payment sector may end up being restricted to only a few Indian companies. What will happen then? This will reduce competition. And this might eventually end up in a situation where customers are paying higher costs for low quality services. So what's next? While the finance ministry has asked RBI to ease certain norms in transferring of data, RBI insists that strict localization of data must be followed. RBI says that the payment systems need closer monitoring because the use of digital transactions is on the rise. So now what is the way forward? Like RBI says, it is important for law enforcement, it is important to ensure customer privacy as well as national security, but hard data localization that is as RBI wants it may impact India's payments ecosystem. All these global players may be forced to exit the Indian market and we might be left with only some domestic companies. Like we discussed earlier, we customers might also have to suffer with low quality services. For the transfer of data, India currently has something called as the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty, which is slow and ineffective. Therefore, now we should consider moving to a system based on bilateral treaties on data transfers with EU, UK and the US. So our major aim should be to ensure access to data is met in a timely manner while at the same time allowing data flows. And these bilateral treaties will help us ensure exactly that. But it is very important to note that data is a valuable commodity. These companies can monetize on the data they collect from us in multiple ways. They can take note of our spending patterns and other such information and monetize on that. Therefore, there is a need for strict regulations. The conflict over data ownership will keep going on unless there is a clearly defined set of rules that make it clear as to who owns this data and to what extent. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.